Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're in Nashville, Tennessee, getting up close and personal with the all new 2016 Chevrolet Cruze. Our tester is a well-equipped Premier RS and comes with just about every optional feature that you can think of. I mean, this vehicle is so significantly different from the last one, we got so many things to talk about. Of course, I'll teach you everything you ever wanted to know about the all new Cruze. So this will be an in-depth review of the cruise. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, take it on a thorough road test, and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. To kick things off, remote start does come standard on the Premier RS. All you have to do, just make sure the vehicle is locked, then hold down the little starter button to go. The remote start smart key entry system and push button ignition are all available on upper trim levels of the cruise. The smart key system uses little buttons on all four door handles to lock and unlock the vehicle. All you have to do is just keep the key fob in your pocket, it's pretty simple. This example is finished in tungsten metallic and features a jet black leather interior. So to start, all you have to do is just make sure you have the key fob within your pocket, then simply put your foot on the brake and hit the dash mounted button to go. The cruise features rank and pinion steering with electric power assistance. As we've discussed in prior videos, compared to traditional hydraulic power steering, the electric setup only requires energy when the wheels are being turned. This eliminates the parasitic losses commonly associated with an engine-driven power steering pop, leading to greater powertrain efficiency. With an all-new, more rigid body structure and revised chassis tuning, combined with a wide track stance similar to what you would find in the new Elantra and Civic, the cruise feels nimble and sporty. Control and overall handling is enhanced in the Premier model with its own Z-Link rear suspension design. The Premier also has a tighter 16 to 1 steering ratio compared to the other trims which carry a 17.2 to 1 ratio. The Premier takes just 2.8 turns to lock whereas the others take 3.2 turns. Through the corners, the steering delivered an appropriate amount of feedback for this segment and it's quick to respond to inputs. Some competitors will offer livelier and even quicker steering, but the cruise was still quite fun and a joy to drive. On all but the Premier, you have your choice between a 6-speed manual or a 6-speed automatic transmission. All of the power is delivered to the front wheels. The Premier is only offered with the automatic, delivering smooth, seamless, and responsive shifts. There's no paddle shifters, but if needed, you can shift the transmission manually by using the plus and minus rocker on top of the gear lever. A backup camera with adaptive guidance lines is available along with rear parking sensors and lane keeping assist. The latter is quite an interesting piece of technology that monitors the lanes in front of you. It'll deliver little nudges if it detects you drifting over the line, helping you keep a linear path. The semi-autonomous nature of the system will basically steer the car by itself for brief periods of time if you let go of the wheel. Of course, the car will soon prompt you to grab the wheel once again. It really is incredible when you consider how advanced things are getting. If you prefer, you can leave lane keep and assist off. Our tester is also equipped with the blind spot monitoring, forward collision alert, and rear cross traffic alert. Boosts in economy even further this year is a new auto start stop feature that is now standard when you opt for the automatic transmission. It shuts the engine off momentarily when sitting at a stoplight or a stop sign to save a bit of fuel. When you release the brake, the engine instantly reignites and you're ready to take off once again. So let's go ahead and flip on the automatic LED accent and projector headlamps, front fog lamps, and the hazards. All four windows are automatic down, but the driver's side window is automatic up as well. Now let's go ahead and check out the exterior, shall we? The Cruise was first offered for sale in the North American market back in 2011. 
Representing a monumental improvement over the Cobalt, which was discontinued after 2010, it's one of the brand's most successful global offerings as of late. Since 2008, over 3.5 million examples have been sold around the world. In the United States, Chevrolet claims that Cruze is the segment's second best seller when it comes to customers under 25 years of age. Of course, the numbers only tell part of the story as to stay successful in such a cutthroat segment with arguably one of the most important demographics out there, efficiency, connectivity, and value are key to staying relative amongst the evolving tastes of prospective buyers. With the all-new second-generation Cruze launching for the 2016 model year, Chevrolet has their sights set high in an attempt to really raise the bar when it comes to a wide variety of model offerings. There's more safety tech and luxurious amenities available, not to mention greater attention to detail in both design and engineering that should help it maintain an excellent position against the recently redesigned Hyundai Elantra and Honda Civic. Other competitors include the Nissan Sentra, Volkswagen Jetta, Toyota Corolla, and Ford Focus. The 2016 Cruze is available in four trim levels, including the L, LS, LT, and Premier. The RS package, shown in our tester, is available on the LT and Premier and includes a sport body kit, front fog lamps, a rear spoiler, RS badging, and on the Premier, unique 18-inch wheels and tires. Pricing for the 2016 Cruze included an $875 destination charge, starts at $17,495 for the entry model, whereas the Premier starts at $23,995. With the RS package, Sun and Sound with Navigation package, Enhanced Convenience package, and the Driver Confidence 2 package, our tester stickers for $28,640. The most significant change this year is the redesigned body structure that now incorporates about 8% hot stamped high strength steels, increasing rigidity by 27% while reducing weight. Along with a lighter weight engine, the new Cruze sheds around 250 pounds over its predecessor. Pretty impressive considering it's in fact a larger car. The wheelbase has been lengthened by 0.6 inches, accompanied by an increase in overall length by 2.7 inches. It's 0.7 inches shorter in height with near identical track widths and overall body width. The dimensional changes combined with a faster windshield rake and sloping rear profile certainly lends to a sportier silhouette. Additional creases and flowing line work in the hood, side profile, roof line, and trunk lid add greater attention to detail to the overall design. A lot of the design was inspired by aerodynamics as well. With low drag coefficient of just 0.28, it leads to greater fuel economy and reduced wind noise and a quieter interior at higher speeds. Up front, the LT and Premier swap out the standard halogen headlamps for projector beam LED accented units for a more upscale look. Also found on upper trim levels are greater use of polished aluminum, piano black, and bright finished accents. Looking at the various trim levels side by side, it's quite cool seeing how each trim package almost has their own distinct flavor. Chevrolet offers a cruise for almost anyone's taste, whether it be basic transportation or near luxury levels of comfort and features. I'd highly recommend the cruise to anyone looking at an affordable compact sedan. The Cruze is available with a variety of wheel options depending on trim level and equipment packages. The sizes range between 15 and 18 inches in diameter. The L and LS come with 15 inch and 16 inch wheels respectively, while alloys are standard on the LT and Premier. Adding the RS package to the Premier replaces the standard 17 inch wheels with these unique silver panted 18 inch 5 twin spoke units. They're wrapped in 225-40 all season tires offering good handling and grip for the segment. As far as the brakes, the 10.8 inch front rotors are internally ventilated and use single piston cast iron calipers. The rear 10.4 inch discs are solid and use single piston and aluminum calipers. Four wheel ABS, traction control and stability control also come standard. Underpinning the cruise is an independent McPherson strut front suspension with specifically tuned coil springs and a direct acting hollow stabilizer bar. While the L, LS and LT use a torsion beam rear suspension, the Premier features a unique Z-Link design. More aluminum was used this go around to lessen unsprung weight and enhance agility. The Premier Z-Link allows for linear vertical travel on both sides of the axle while preventing horizontal movement, leading to greater balance and enhanced stability all while keeping it more in line with the front suspension. The setup is more compact and lightweight than a fully independent suspension and even helps maximize trunk space. 
It seems like a great solution for a car like this, especially with the stiffer body structure, as it leads to sharper handling and greater control without compromising practicality or adding unnecessary weight. I was more surprised by how well the car rode. It's a lot more comfortable and smooth than you might think. Bumps are quelled without transmitting unpleasantness to the cabin. Overall length is 183.7 inches with a width of 70.6 inches and a height of 57.4 inches. It rides on a 106.3 inch wheelbase and has a curb weight between 2,900 and 3,000 pounds. The Cruze uses a new hood latch system that I first saw in some of BMW's newest products. Rather than having a secondary catch at the hood that you would have to fish for after pulling the interior lever, you just pull the lever twice. Then simply walk up to the hood and just open it. It's a far more convenient and easy to use design. The Cruze is powered by an all new direct injected 1.4 liter turbocharged inline 4 cylinder. The block and head are made from aluminum while the valve train consists of dual overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder and continuous variable valve timing. The compression ratio is rated at 10 to 1, accompanied by a 6,500 RPM redline. Compared to its predecessor, the new engine features lighter architecture and weighs a little over 40 pounds less. Low friction measures including new piston rings, a revised camshaft drive, and an updated oil pump help boost efficiency. It develops 152 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 177 pound-feet of torque between 2,000 and 4,000 RPM. Chevrolet claims that leads to a segment best 0 to 60 time of 7.7 seconds. It certainly feels peppy, especially around town. On the highway, passing ability, kick down acceleration, and overall noise levels are excellent. As far as fuel economy, the cruise is rated between 30 miles to a gallon in the city and 40 on the highway. Other trim levels equipped with the automatic are able to hit 42 on the highway, while manual transmission cars are rated at 29 city and 41 highway. Regular unleaded fuel is recommended and is held within a 13.7 gallon tank unless you opt for an LS automatic which has a smaller 12.1 gallon tank. As much as I loved the exterior styling of our tester, the interior is the real winner when it comes to improved quality, available technology, and all the distinctive touches that makes each model of the Cruze unique in their own way. The Cruise Premier replaces the top-line LTZ trim of its predecessor and offers luxurious appointments in the highest quality of materials in the Cruise lineup. Leather upholstery is standard as is piano black trim and premium patent materials across the doors and dash. The latter features French accent stitching. Considering the segment and price point, designers did a great job with the interior detailing. Even with how the graining of the plastic components closely match the soft touch points. It's attention to detail like that and all of the chrome bits throughout that made the cruise really stand out for me. It's a lot of upscale style and class that looks pricier than it really is. In other words, the Premier certainly didn't feel like your traditional compact car. The new dual cockpit interior theme appears to encompass each of the front occupants within their own environment. This is especially noticeable with the available two-tone Kalahari interior, my personal favorite color choice. Like the exterior, layered and flowing line work seamlessly blend the curvature of the dash with the upper door panels for greater continuity. The ergonomics are excellent, everything is easy to reach, and there's plenty of ways to stay connected through standard touchscreen infotainment systems and available wireless phone charging station, in-car Wi-Fi, and so much more. The environment is significantly roomier than before, with more comfort for up to five people. This is especially true up front where the seats offer a lot of padding and general well-rounded support. They're extremely comfortable. On the Premier, the driver's seat is powered while the passenger seat is manual, including height adjustment. A manual tilting telescoping steering wheel is also standard. We've already discussed some of the safety tech available, but there's also 10 airbags located throughout the interior. So let's go and see if she sounds, both sitting still and on the road.
Now we're going to shut her up and check out the interior features. Our tester features the optional 9-speaker premium Bose audio system for a big step up in audio quality over the bass setup, crisp clean treble, and deep low bass. It also features the optional 8-inch MyLink infotainment system with navigation that has a lot of smartphone integration capabilities such as Pandora Internet Radio, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. We've talked about this system more in depth in prior videos, so we won't hit it too hard for this video, but it's extremely easy to use, very much like a smartphone, all of the icons are organized in an app style fashion, and you have things like pinching, swiping, and more. Apple CarPlay is pretty cool, adding a bit of extra functionality with telephone, music, messaging, you can even use the phone's navigation through the system. Pretty neat! You have real-time weather updates, traffic updates, and all of the typical media integrations such as hands-free Bluetooth streaming, iPod, auxiliary, USB, and satellite radio. At the base of the eight pillars, you have small quarter windows for better visibility, of course your side curtain airbags all the way around, and up top, pad advisors. Devices also feature illuminated vanity mirrors. The rear view mirror is auto dimming, while on the top stack you have your hands free Bluetooth microphone, controls for your automatic sunroof, reading lamps, and OnStar controls. Continuing down the center stack, right beneath the infotainment system, is a standard single zone electronic automatic climate control system. There's fan speed to the left, temperature to the right, different zones in the middle, front and rear defrost, and in this particular model, three stage heated seats for both the driver and passenger. I'll talk about this a little bit more later in the video, but this one also has the available heated rear seats. In the very bottom, this is a little storage tray with a USB, auxiliary port, and 12 volt power outlet. Two cup holders across the console, traction control and parking sensors like I talked about earlier, there's an available wireless phone charging station as well as a little slot to set it in right there, as well as a full padded center console, open it up to a pretty decent amount of space. As far as the steering wheel on the right hand side you have your hands free telephone voice commands as well as the controls to the driver information system that shows up in that little digital display in the middle of the instrument cluster. There's a whole lot of features packed in, such as a digital speed readout, trip computer, fuel data, and all that kind of stuff, you know, tire pressure monitoring system, but just like the MyLink system, you can also control the audio, phone, navigation, and system settings. On the left-hand side, in addition to the optional heated steering wheel function, you also have cruise control and some of the optional advanced safety tech like forward collision warning and lane keeping assist. Right behind the steering wheel you have your intermittent wipers to the left hand side, turn signals, high beams, and automatic high beam activation. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll hop in the back seat and check out overall space and amenities. So with having the new structure and longer wheelbase, the cruise not only has more interior room than the previous generation, but now it has class leading interior room. I'm 5 foot 10 and with a comfortable seating position for myself in front, I probably have a good 3.5, maybe even 4 inches of leg space. Head space is also pretty good, depending on where you put it, maybe 2.5 to 3 inches or so. Comfort is also class leading. I mean, like we talked about with how supportive and well rounded the front seats were, the back seat is also surprisingly comfortable. I mean, this would be a really, really nice car to travel in just because you have good overall body support. There's also really good lower back support. Not a whole lot of lateral support, but they're so squishy and padded. I mean, you almost just sink into them. The headrests are also adjustable. You can see up to five people in the cruise. And there's also a fold down armrest right here. Again, nice and padded with two cup holders. Hopping in the middle seat, you probably lose about half inch to an inch of headspace. Not too bad. You might fight for shoulder space depending on the size of the people back here, but leg space is ever abundant. Um, there's a little drivetrain hump right here, but it doesn't come up too far. The center console doesn't intrude back here whatsoever, so it's definitely a nice place. For taller people, might want to reserve it for temporary use, but it's definitely a nice feature to have.
As far as amenities and overall build quality back here, I mean, quality and panel fitment, everything like that is top notch for the class. There's some more premium soft touch elements across the middle portions of the doors with the accent stitching. Good storage in the lower door panels, seat back storage pockets. There's um, uh, coat hooks to either side, reading lamps up top, child seat anchors, adjustable headrests. So yeah, it's uh, got all the, the necessary stuff, but one thing I think is pretty cool, this one has the optional heated rear seats. So for the class, that's pretty awesome. I know the Hyundai Elantra offers um, something similar to that. It's just single stage heating for the um, bottom portion of the cushion on the outer edges. So get a little bit of extra comfort on those cold days. There's also some added flexibility with charging when it comes to larger devices like laptop computers, because down at the bottom of the console here, there's a 150 watt grounded household plug. So that's pretty much it for back here, an extremely comfortable back seat, I mean very very roomy, nice appointments and available options. So let's go ahead and check out trunk space. Out back, the LT and Premier can carry upwards of 13.9 cubic feet of cargo, whereas the L and LS actually have more cargo space, 14.8 cubic feet worth. It's a pretty generous amount of space in general and should be enough to load plenty of stuff for an extended vacation. The load height isn't too tall and you can stow some larger items back there. But if you need to stow longer items, the rear seat folds 60-40 split. Underneath the trunk floor, there's a temporary spare tire. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all new 2016 Chevrolet Cruze. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.